Murphy, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so I, as always, want to start at the very beginning. So I read a few bits that you did point to points and stuff. So is this where it all started? How did you get into the industry? Good question. Um, I was actually uh, born and raised into the industry. My mum trained for 30 years and my dad been up being a bloodstock for the last for the last 25 years. So, uh, yeah, I didn't have a have a way out, really. So, um, yeah, I started off uh, race riding and then kind of got, got too heavy and went and, and worked for Gordon Elliott on Ireland. So was there ever a plan B or was it always going to be in racing? I suppose, yeah, no, I, I was uh, I was a keen keen sportsman at school. I enjoyed my football, but uh, yeah, racing took over from a young age, and uh, I got the bug, so they so they call it. And uh, yeah, I've been in it since since I was sixteen. You went to Alan King, didn't you, first for your sort of experience? I did. Yeah, I spent eighteen months there. Um, had a, had a fantastic grounding there. He's a a real good fella, a tough man to work for, um, but a very fair man and uh, someone who I get on very well with now and would would, would certainly give a give a phone call to if if I need a bit of advice. And uh, a man I look up to. I, I I've never ever called anyone Mister or Miss in my life, and he's the only man I'd, I'd still refer to as uh, as governor. That's how much respect I have for him. And uh, I had a, had a fantastic time there. I've actually just remembered that I've been to Alan King's yard on a school trip when I was younger. Yeah, it's, it's, the, most unbe it's the most unbelievable place. Um, I was yeah, very lucky to work there and uh, he's uh, a man I look up to and, uh, and is still doing a, a very, very good job. So would you say that everything that you know would come from Alan King and your time there? It's nice. I, I spent 18 months there at a relatively young age and, uh, and obviously then went and spent five years in Gordon Elliott. So, uh, listen, I learned loads off, off, off Alan King, um, but the way I've set my place up is predominantly on, on, on how Gordon Elliott trains, but I, I'd still do plenty of things that I learned off, off the governor. When you went over to Ireland, how did you get that job? Is it almost like a, you have to apply for the jobs and the roles? Yeah, listen, I actually was going over at a at young age. I still had a had a riding licence at the time and uh, Gordon had, had just started out uh, out training and uh, he was in his old yard in Caprani, which is the other side of town to where he is now. And uh, I, I basically went over to spend the summer there with a, with a friend of mine and uh, end up doing that for a couple of summers. And Gordon got bigger and uh, offered me a job and said, did I want to come over, over full time and, and, and fill a certain position? And uh, yeah, the rest is history, really. I spent four and a half years there and probably the four, best four and a half years of my life. What's the difference between UK training and I Irish training? Very good question. Um, probably not a lot, but uh, things are done differently in Ireland. Um, it's a different culture. Um, things, are, things are run differently. Uh, they train off different gallops to what we train off. And to say it's more rough and ready is, is the wrong way to put it, but... It's certainly more laid back and not as regimental over there as it is over here. So uh, I train horse a li little bit differently to most over here. And, and my starting times and finishing times would be uh, a bit different to a normal English yard. But uh, yeah, I had a, had a fantastic time over there and worked for, worked for a genius. Where you just mentioned about the gallops, I really wanted to know what the difference in gallops are. Because I saw on your website you have two different types of gallops. So what is the difference? Yeah, so I train on, and my main gallop is a, is a deep Wexford sand circle, um, which are starting to become a trend in England now as well. Um, every grain of sand that, that, that I bought over to put on my own gallop uh, came over from Ireland. It's, uh, it's, it, the, the, the sand is called Wexford sand. And yeah, there's a, there's a few people have done the same in England. Um, the, 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 the rest have kind of uh, gone for a similar kind of sand in, in, in England instead of ferrying it over. But I thought if I was to full flat my face that I'd do it copying what Gordon did and uh, I didn't try and complicate anything and kind of kept facilities pretty much the same as he's got. So does the types of gallops then make a big difference in the horses and how they train? Yeah, I, I, I'd say, yes it does, yeah. I suppose as, as a trainer you're, you're no different to a football manager. If you're, if you're learning off Sir Alex Ferguson you probably train your team very similar to how he used to train his team and uh, it's no different with us really. Um, I haven't complicated things, I've kept things are similar to what Gordon does as, uh, as I possibly could and uh, I train off a deep sand circle I, I wouldn't have to train off a, off a hill gallop as I, I, I've never learned that and I've never trained for a trainer who's uh, got that facility so uh, yeah I suppose it's just keeping things simple in this game and uh, yeah. So does that mean all your gallops are on a flat surface? Yeah we're very flat where we are in the in the middle of Warwickshire um, as the crow flies Dan Skelton's 
three miles from a sea trains up a up a very steep hill. So yeah, it's just where we are. And say unfortunately we haven't got a hill. It doesn't bother me. It, it, it's it's the way my gallops are. I train off deep surfaces. So uh, yeah, we've a we've a good routine and and, and kind of we know what we're doing. It's it's a it's a very deep surface. So uh, you don't have to go as quick to get them fit. Um, it, it's it's more endurance work what we do than than, than speed and sharp work. Um, so it's it's just a different way of training. It's it's what makes the world go round. Um, uh, there's no right and no wrong way, and uh, I do things a little bit differently to most. But uh, thank God it seems to work. When you're training the horse, what is well, how long is it from when you get the horse on the yard and then prepare it for its first race? How long is that period of time? The horse sat in the field um, for its summer holiday and was a, was a winter horse. I, I I tend to tell an owner now it'd be twelve weeks from from grass um, to, to, to being on the racetrack as long as you didn't get any interference in between. Um, so some horses are bigger and, and, and stuffier types than others and some horses might be leaner and wouldn't take as much getting fit. But I think you have to allow 12 weeks for a, for, for a horse to get fit off grass. 12 weeks? 12 weeks, three months. Oh, that's... Be a fair, be a fair boot camp for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to do it myself. That's shorter than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be about sort of six months or something. Yeah, no, it's um, I suppose just with everything how modern it is now, it, it used to be a lot longer. People used to do a lot of road work and a lot of walking and trotting, and things have things have changed with times and uh, uh, things are speeding up. We've got horse walkers now, and mm. people have got swimming pools and spas and water treadmills, and yeah, it just it doesn't half speed everything up, and and just. The way times are now and how modern everything is, it's yeah, it's bad. So, what is your daily routine then, as a trainer, and your involvement with the horses? So yeah, we um we pull out our first lot at seven o'clock in the morning. So uh, my my alarm goes off at, at quarter past six in the morning. Mm. Um, and uh, I'd be up in the yard uh, just after half past six, where I do the do the board. The board has got every single horse on in the place uh, on it and myself and, and, and my assistant go through what everything's doing for the day, who's riding what and what work everyone's getting. That takes kind of 20, 25 minutes. And then, uh, then, then first lot, the first horses come out of their stables at, at seven o'clock in the morning. So we then, we, we're then on the gallop from kind of seven to half 11. Um, so um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a busy enough morning and we, we usually finish up at kind of 12 to half 12 and the, uh, and the staff go and get their lunch and, and have a lunch break. And, then they're back from half two to half four and um i like the place empty from from four four thirty onwards which is quite unusual but uh i think horses like like, like a bit of peace and quiet and uh i have a have a head lad who has a late night check then at uh at eight o'clock and uh, and then they're not fed then till next morning at uh at quarter past six so what do the horses eat what is their feed so they get a yeah they get a scoop of feed in the morning a scoop at lunchtime and they could get up to four scoops of an evening um so I tend to feed mine very well now. Um, they do a lot of grafts, so they obviously need their protein um, to kind of go back inside them. Um, they're on ulcer powders, they're on, uh, they listen, to that. they're on everything that we're on. <laughs> Basically, racehorse protein shakes. Um, it's, yeah, you can do all sorts for a racehorse and uh, it's, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a girl who does, does up 130 feeds every evening for the horses. So yeah, she's, um, giving them electrolytes on a, on a Monday, Wednesday and a Friday to, 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 to keep them hydrated and keep them going. And uh, yeah, there's certain types of feed, there's a horse which are, are racing or on a certain feed, horse which aren't racing on a, on a, on a lower protein type of feed. And uh, they can, yeah, like, like, like humans eat, eat drink a, a protein shake or a protein bar. We try and put as much protein into them as we possibly can to, yeah, to get the best out of them. So if they're racing on that day, do they get fed after the race or? They're, if they're racing, if they're racing that afternoon, they'd just get a morning feed. They wouldn't get a lunchtime feed and they'd get no hay. Um, try and keep their bellies empty. Same as us. Um, we get stitch if we eat before, uh, before swimming, before going for a run and they're, 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 they're no different. So do they drink still before? Do you let them drink? They would do. We, we, we wouldn't let them drink for two hours after, but, uh, before a race now. So, um, yeah, it's um the logistics to it are quite complicated. It's it's a very professional sport now, and uh, there's obviously a lot of money at stake. So we try and do things as professional as we can. So do you have to really watch the horses and then maybe alter their feeds and stuff just in case you know one's putting on more weight or one's not? Yeah, you would do. It'd be more so that they'd be losing weight, or fillies might go off their off their food, or 
if a horse has had a hard season or a hard race, it might just take them four or five days to to want to go back to their food completely and lick the bowl. It's a, it's a great sign for a trainer if a horse is licking the bowl clean. It means that they're, they're healthy and they're happy and, and not a lot is phasing them. But that's where you have good staff around you to tell you kind of what's eating well and what's not. And if a horse isn't eating great, you might end up backing off them on the gallops a little bit and not giving them as much graft as um uh, as they're getting from them and just try and get them back on their food. Are they always fed on the floor as well, like not in mangers or anything? Ours, ours are all fed in mangers, whether they're mangers on the floor or, or, or on the walls. So, um, yeah, ours, ours are all fed in mangers, but some people like to, like to feed them actually just off the floor. Mm, I always wondered that because when we feed our horses, mum would always say, look, the jockeys and the trainers, they all put their horses hay and food on the floor, so we're doing that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I just thought about that. <laughs> she's, she's not wrong. How do you know what races suit the horse? So have you got to really watch them in that 12-week period to then decide what you're going to enter them in? Their pedigrees tell you an awful lot um, of, of kind of what trip they'll end up running over. Um, and you get to you get to know the athlete itself. Um, so yeah, you, you you get to know your horse as well. We're uh, I suppose as a, a as a trainer, we're no different to a to a school uh, to a school teacher. You get to um you, you get to know your pupils or your or your horses, and yeah, I suppose we're no different uh, as trainers. Is there ever a point where a horse isn't doing very well, and then you sort of have to say to the owner, like, look, there's nothing we can do. It's not going to make. It. Yeah, no. Listen, a racehorse. It's an expensive hobby. Um, and it's obviously a business for an awful lot of people. So I, I tend to try not to, to, to take people down the garden path if, if a horse has got no ability. Um, we move on to pastures new. There's plenty of things they can, um, they can do after, after racing. So uh, we've, we've, we've a big operation now and they have to, have to have some kind of ability now to be inside the, 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 the doors and, and for me to be, keep sending out a bill to an owner every month. So do you have to then do like a, have to do an assessment on the horse before it comes in? Uh, not, not, not really. No, you, you, you're just unfortunate. When you get into a fortunate position and you, you've only a certain number of stables, there might be a certain horse that you might go. Unfortunately, it's not good enough to come in, or, 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 or it may well be better off going somewhere else. Listen, I'm yet to do that. Um, I'm a young trainer that, 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 that likes to give everyone a chance, and uh, I was taught that way by Gordon as well. So, um, yeah, we take most things in and uh, give could give everyone a go but if they're if they're not up to up to standards now that they're, they're, they'll be moved on to pastures near so when you see a horse that's just come in do you sort of have an idea of how it is going to perform or is it sort of a trial and error uh, you, 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 you need to give them a chance because some horse with ordinary pedigrees can can surprise you not very often but uh but yeah you do want to trial and test most horses because you could end up with egg on your face pushing a horse aside and it going somewhere else and, and you end up having to see it win for another trainer it's very very frustrating and then if you've got a horse that likes a particular course, do you then sort of enter them that, to enter them into that race at the same course you, as you, much as you can? You, you, you would do. Some horses like a stiff track with a, with, with, with a hill at the finish. Some horses like a flat track. Some horses like going left-handed and right-handed. So, yeah, you get to know your horse um, pretty well, um, especially when you start racing it and you're able to run it in the right races, most definitely. And how do you tell a horse's form? I suppose again, just getting to just getting to know the horse well. Um, you, you know when it's in good form, it's in bad form. You know what ground it likes. You know what tracks it's going to perform best at. Um, what jockey gets on best with it. Um, it. There's obviously a handicapping system, so once it comes out of a certain grade, it might struggle, or you might have a progressive horse that can keep going up through the through the ranks. You just get to know them, and uh, listen, we get it wrong as much as we get it right, but uh, sometimes you know too much. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, we're seeing them every day and uh, you do get to know them fairly well. You started off in 2017 as a trainer, didn't you? Correct, yeah. Would you say that you're learning stuff all the time, even now? Because I know you have did your work experience at some fantastic yards, but is it, it's sort of the thing where you're learning all the time. Yeah, no, listen, most definitely. Um, I've... Um, I'll never stop learning. Um, I'm still ringing, ring Gordon for, for, for loads of advice. Um, yeah, you never, you never stop learning and you never stop making mistakes either. It's, um, it's a very cutthroat business we're in. Um, it's a, uh, excuse me, it's a results driven business as well. So, um, you've got to, yeah, you've got to be on your A game and, uh, keep improving and keep, yeah, doing the right things. So you've had great winners already and some fantastic ones this year. Who are the ones to look out for, would you say, in the next season? Good question. I've um, I've got an awful lot of young horses to run. I'm going to be running a lot of horses in in, in bumpers in the in the next four to six weeks. We're running them in the National Hunt flat races to start off their career. So um, 
a few names to keep an eye on in the in, in the coming weeks. Um, a horse called Fletch um, could be a very nice horse. Um, there's a lovely horse called Lord of Karak, um, and there's uh, there's a lovely horse called No Risk de Floss. There are three lovely young horses to to keep an eye on, and then we've obviously got the household names of of Thomas Darby, Bring Up a Storm and Itchy Feet. So hopefully they'll go on to bigger and better things. But no, I'm in a in a lucky position. I've got some lovely young horse to train and. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll start getting on, on the track now in a couple of weeks' time. I suppose that's an like a very exciting moment when you've got a really good bunch of horses coming in and you're like, ah, oh, I can't wait to get going. Yeah, no, it is. It, it's, it's a really exciting time of year at the moment um, for us. Our season's just about to get going. So, um, yeah, we, um, we, we can't wait. Um, we're just desperate for this rain to keep coming so the ground's going to be safe. So, uh, yeah, we're the only people in the country that are enjoying it raining at the moment. But uh, it just means we'll be on the racetrack sooner rather than later. And how have you found lockdown? It's been okay. Um, listen, it, it, it's 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 we're probably more fortunate than most because our work is is outside, and unfortunately, a horse can't feed or train itself. So we had to keep going. Um, we were always uh, we were always busy. Uh, racing got back going after after three months of uh, of having no uh, no sport. Um, but uh, it was good to get back racing. It was frustrating having horses excuse me, ready to run in the, in the summer and, uh, and then racing was, was obviously shut down. But yeah, we were delighted to get back racing in July and just hopefully things can, can keep going now and we might be able to get people back inside, uh, inside a racetrack, not, uh, not, not before too long. Yeah, because it's really weird, isn't it, when there's just no crowds and especially watching it on TV. It's such an eerie, strange thing. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's a very strange thing and especially going racing and there's only yourselves there and, uh, and, and kind of senior medical staff. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's a weird feeling and uh, the whole mask thing, it's, it's, it's just, a, yeah, it's just odd, isn't it? But the world's in a, a funny place at the moment and it's just, it's good that we're, we're racing and um, we're able to, able to keep the sport going and uh, just long may that continue and hopefully people will be allowed back in before too long. I have a mum question. So she says, why don't horses get escorted up to the schools by another horse like they do in America? Question: you, you you can pony a horse to the start over here, but it's just yeah, it's not done very often. Um, on the flat, they do it a little bit more. Um, Tom George did it with one horse last year, actually. But uh, yeah, it's been done very very seldom over here. Don't ask me why, um, but yeah, it's been done very seldom. But tell a tell a good question. Fantastic. Well, that is all my questions. Be in touch. Take care. Thank you, and you. Bye. Bye bye. Fly away with me. Come and fly away with me.